Hey, 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 I'm Michelle. And I'm Greta. We are girlfriends who have always been seekers. We love learning, sharing, and most of all, we love having those soul to soul moments with our girlfriends. Our podcast is about spiritual connection and sisterhood. You are not alone. So grab your glass, get comfy, and join us as we make some noise, light up the room, and get get into into it. Thank you so much for coming to talk to us. This is our good friend, Marin McElhaney, and we think she has an inspiring story of rebirth and transformation, and we think women are really going to get a lot of wisdom and insight just from hearing her talk about her journey so far. You've had a whirlwind of life changes happen in a short period of time. Yeah, I was looking at the calendar. It's been about a year. It's been about like actually a full year of planning and moving forward. And, you know, yeah, about this time last year, you know, I've kind of made that just difficult decision to get divorced. I don't even know if you actually make that decision. You know, you, you make the decision to leave first. And then that comes with a whole bunch of, you know, emotions and whatnot. You know, that's never an easy decision or a quick decision, never when there's children involved. But then there's just, you know, I grew up in a family where you get, you know, three strikes, you're out. But then I was on my fifth strike. And then there becomes a strike that you can't put under the rug. You can't ignore. It's so bad. You know, it's so bad. There's a lot of things you can live with. And then there's just some that you can't. And then you have to make that decision and making the decision is actually at that point, the easy part. And then dealing with the the repercussions when you start not being able to see your kids as much as you did before. And, you know, you don't see your bonus kids when you make that decision and you're going through a divorce and you realize they're graduating from high school and you being there is going to put the focus on the drama and not on their special day. So you don't go. A lot of sacrifices. Yeah, that one still stings. That one still really stings. I'm seeing and feeling so much emotion right now. Mm, Like that was empathizing with you, but also just seeing you be so vulnerable and open with us. And I appreciate you sharing your heart right now. Well, I haven't really talked about that one before, but you know, you have to make what eventually when the, the smoke clears, you just make the right decision for the kids. And if you could focus on that, almost you get like a sense of clarity immediately. You know, I come from a long line of preachers and teachers and farmers <laughs> and a couple couple football players Mm -hmm. (laughs) but you know the one thing that was just clear through all of their careers especially my mother's was to focus on children and I think that probably about you know after five or six months of self-care going to the gym trying to refocus trying to rebrand then eventually you know re rediscovering what your motto is going to be and that builds on itself every day but if you can find one thing that just cl- that is clear, that you're just like, this is right. This is the right thing to do. Everything else, I don't really know what's going on, but this is the right thing to do. And that was to focus on the kids, what's good for the kids. And through that, you know, about, I would say about five months into it, with some good friends, you know, going to the gym, getting those endorphins, I came up with this idea just to kind of rebrand my life. And that was to buy a farm. <laughs> <laughs> so branding Amazing. here yeah. is we're talking about branding, but like this is in so many different ways. Because when I think about even branding, it, it correlates to farming. You know, there's yeah. And you today showed up with chickens um, or duck <laughs> duck. Michelle yeah. Michelle's from the city. Yeah, I'm not an animal girl, so I love that we're having this conversation because I need to learn. <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. We have ducks in the studio, you guys. Um, <laughs> so, so cute. You know, when I bought this farm, you know, I said we were going to get start getting animals and I talked to artists and, and she said, you know, well, can we get ducks? Artist is your daughter and she is five or six, She's now. six now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. They grow up so um, and so I promised her at one point we would get ducks. So it's almost a year later. And we have four ducks, two girls, two boys. Now, they came with little bracelets to identify which are the girls and which are the boys. But artists took them off. Oh, no. (laughs) So we don't know. But, you know, they're all going to stay together. But they have have gone everywhere with us now. So I just kind of let them snuggle in there. Oh, Oh, they're just yelling all over you. (laughs) So, So, yes, this is just one of the we now have. Sorry, buddy. 
So if you hear all the little chirping going yeah. on, I mean, these yeah. are live animals today. This is so awesome. Live animals <laughs> in the studio today. <laughs> so you will, I, after this is done, you'll definitely get some duck snuggling time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell you, uh, all the endorphins in the world from the gym do not amount to duck snuggling. Oh. Duckling, especially. I don't know what it is. It's a newfound thing. I had no idea. They showed up in the mail. Like I, they, I, you know what? Specially Honestly, delivered. I, I just dove right into this and, you know, through Instagram and other people that are homesteading or and I, I literally just I said, you know what, I come from generations of farmers. And even though I'm a little bit far removed, I'm like, you know, you just got to learn by taking chances. And so I literally called up this hatchery. It's 100 years old. I figured they know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. And I ordered ducks and they, they it's the McMurray hatchery in Tennessee, I think, or Illinois, but they came from Tennessee and they literally give you text updates of where your ducks are. And they showed up at the post office at 6 a.m. And I had to go down there and say, I'm here for the ducklings. <laughs> and um, to collect my ducks. And like, it was like, I was, you know, they had to check my ID. They had to check my address. This is, you know, like, the, I'm like, who is going to come down at six in the morning and say, I'm here for ducklings? I mean, <laughs> right. <come on. laughs> who's stealing ducks? Yeah. But so so anyways, I mean they've really they've gone everywhere with us. We took them to Tahoe. Oh. You know, under a heat lamp. Uh-huh. But yeah, so I, I fulfilled my promise to my daughter when I bought this farm. We now have ducks. But we have a lot of other things too. Now we have five mini ponies. We have, uh, unfortunately, it's a really funny story, but now we have 10 guinea pigs. <laughs> oh, God, if you want a guinea pig, if anybody wants a guinea pig, please contact me. How do they contact you? We'll put it in show notes. Yeah. But okay. just like, um, what's so, your... Yeah, our, our farm's name is Happy Hooves California. So it's happy underscore hooves California. We're on Instagram. And talking about that, you know, the first thing we did when we moved into the farm, we um, thought about our brand and and what that was going to mean and and kind of our motto and our mission and that kind of directed us down the path so once you we got we have you know three different brands and one that we use for our livestock one that we use for our school programs and the other one we use for fun swag you know you gotta have some fun swag so oh, yeah, absolutely um, so you are about schools you're taking the mini horses or their ponies to schools now you just started doing that yeah so i actually have done it for two years with another lady and there's a, a company a, accreditation system called PATH. It's a thera therapeutic riding and equine therapy. So I've been doing that for two years and just thought it was time to get my own minis. And so quickly that escalated quickly too. So now I have five minis. Wow. Um, I have three that can do the work and then two that are rescued from a kill pen that we are basically rehabilitating them. And I'm, you know, they, one of them has severe PTSD. So I actually work with veterans with her. Mm. So some I can go to schools with, some I can go to veteran homes with, and then we also do senior homes and hospitals. Amazing. Um, so you match up basically the personality or the horse's trauma with who they're going to be helping. Yeah. Actually, that's, yeah, very true. What's going to be best for that student or patient or person? And then also what's going to be best for the horse? So we don't really let them work more than two hours. Horses can feel your heartbeat up to about, you know, 20 feet away. Heard that. It's um, amazing. So when you get to the animal, they know what mood you're in, you know, and they also go through that journey. So they know, are you nervous? Are you scared? Are you, you know, and so they feel all this before you even get to them. That's why you kind of have to walk slow kind of let them smell you give them a little moment because they've already been encountering you a lot longer than you've been encountering them so I'm holding in a little laughter and I really wish I would have talked to you before I experienced my own equine therapy my husband and I went to a couple's retreat and it was all very therapy based and so when I looked on the list of what our extra activity was it was equine therapy Marin I had no idea what that really meant just like, you know, I thought our ducks were chickens right now. Like, I don't know <laughs> animals at all. And so all of that was brand new. And I'm going to just share very briefly because I'm loving everything you're saying and I want to hear so much more. But the experience of the, uh, the person receiving the therapy without even really knowing anything about horses, it was so fascinating. And it was probably the most profound experience I had at this retreat in all the things that we did. And we worked on communication. We worked on 
I can't even tell you just so many different things, but that interaction with the horses and what you learn about yourself and what we learned about the horses and each other and how we even interact with each other all by spending that time very slowly, very gently Mm -hmm. um, was amazing. So I think this is so phenomenal what you're doing, bringing these animals to people. Into words, isn't it? It's like, it it is happening to you, but you're, it's very hard to put it into words what exactly is happening. It's an experience. You just Um, have to kind of go through it. I think they're mirrors. I think they're definitely mirrors to your Mm -hmm. soul and mirrors to your relationship. You talked to a lot of horse girls and (laughs) you're going to love this. I brought my ex to ride my horse and he stayed on exactly seven seconds. (laughs) Um, they know okay. that's telling <laughs> they know wow. um, and you know I bring every you know people that are very special to me to meet my retired mare who I think is probably one of the smartest animals I've ever met and uh, she it, she has amazing breeding she came from the number one stallion in the USA um, from Barbara Ellison's um, special stallion she was his firstborn and there is something to be said about that it, you know these traits that they find in in horses intelligence athleticism empathy empathy is so hard to teach kids and i know for myself it was i was a very tough kid i came from a single mom like she was a principal she was you know my dad was a navy pilot very tough people saying i love you is just not in my presbyterian rough farmer upbringing you know and so when you meet these horses they have so much empathy and so much patience and that's really hard to teach and they taught me that growing up and so now when i take them you know just recently yesterday we went to the high school and we worked with what they're considered um like at risk youth like they might drop out they're having tr- you know, trouble in class they've had some family situations that you know are just unbearable and so they're just considered at risk And a lot of them are like you. They've never even seen a horse. You've never walked a horse, never been around one. And at first, everybody was very nervous. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they spent an hour with the horses. And by the end, they were brushing them and petting them and walking them and just taking a breath. Mm. They weren't on their phones. And in the beginning, they were all on their phones. They wanted to take selfies, selfies, selfies. And then eventually, you know, they're like, I'm like, you need both hands. And, you know, they just, for and a lot of the teachers said, well, this is the first time that they've let go of their phones and yeah. probably the whole year. You kind of have to be present around an animal that big. Yeah, <laughs> you do. But just, just yeah. like the moment of that yeah. freedom of yeah. these kids being able to let go of their phones. I mean, that, that alone was worth it right there. We talk so much, Greta and I, amongst ourselves and also a lot of times with our guests too, just about kids, of course, but also kind of getting back to like the roots of things and how you know we've gotten so far away from community in a way of us sitting down together making eye contact sharing experiences in the moment where the devices the you know all the distractions of the world have just really infiltrated and I think I would imagine farming, like having these animals, they're rooted, like these kids. It is so fascinating that you're able to even bring that into like a more modern environment. Mm-hmm. That's what I think is so cool is that they don't even have to leave where I they mean, are. I brought shavings into your beautiful studio. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah we're calling that. them um, <laughs> duck dust. <laughs> yes, my, my chicken sparkles. <laughs> chicken sparkle. <laughs> but that's, I mean, and I'm totally cool with that. I, I don't mind, but because to me, I'm looking at that and it's like, whoa, this is nature coming in. And I think that's what's so awesome about these programs is, you know, a lot of times we have these big ideas where in order to get the kid off the phone or to do, we have to go big, right? And it's like, no, just even bringing this to them in their own environment and allowing them to see what nature provides and having that moment and letting the teachers watch this too. I'm sure that was, you mentioned that, oh, but they honestly, blew their minds. I think it was it, in the end, like I have more, the, the, the vice principal came out, the teachers were walking the horses. I think it provided a little bit more relief for the teachers mm-hmm. in the end than it did the kids. I mean, they were just, I don't think they think about themselves all day long. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a hundred percent focused on the kids. And for a minute there, there's this horse like giving them snuggles or, mm-hmm. you know, going, you know, the horse makes d- decisions, but then, you know, once you bond with the horse, it will follow you around. And like just getting that, you know, that kind of recognition that the kids don't give them, you know, they, they, yeah. they, fight to break into these kids worlds all day long and 
it's exhausting, you know, and I feel like that's why we only make the minis work two hours because they take on all these emotions. Sure. And so I basically, you know, we have a team and they only work for two hours. They go back to the um, trailer. If we have a long day, we'll bring in a second team. But yeah, they're working. I mean, these horses are really working. They're absorb. They're sponges. So I mean, that would that's a really great part of what we're doing. And I was kind of doing that before, but then it's it snowballed into more. So now we have these ponies that I kind of built this heaven for on the farm, but now it's turned into a lot more. It's turned into kind of a sustainable farming school. Wow. And you know, the company is owned by my business and our business is childcare. We've been doing it for 38 years and we take care of about a thousand kids a day in the Dublin Pleasanton School District. So we have a really strong foundation about curriculum and caretaking and we're licensed. So we only have one teacher per 12, 14 students. And that is disappearing mostly just because of cost and demand, but because we are large enough and we're a nonprofit, we keep those prices low for the parents. So we found kind of a, I, I don't know, a system that works. Staying nonprofit, we can actually you know not gouge our parents. And we've always had a summer camp program. And so now we have been able to build out the farm um, long enough that we're going to be able to do a farm to school sustainable farming camp. And that is what I'm so excited about. And I, if you would have asked me last year, what would have happened? I mean, this has really come full circle. So definitely the equine therapy is in a way, my way of giving back my, my way of providing service to the community and, and also using my skills. But what has come out of it, it, and what I think is so great is if you go out there and you start volunteering and you start doing something on a small scale, you find maybe your community or you find some that's that needs to be fixed and then you find other people that are doing the same thing and you can become part of a movement and that's really what has come full circle this is a point I wanted to share with you guys it's a little bit vulnerable when I left my divorce I had so many problems that were you know like created in some some ways you know through nine years of marriage you know everybody's guilty of creating something by not acknowledging the problems in my marriage and sweeping them under the rug, I created a monster, you know? And so I think eventually with divorce and retrospect, you, one, one thing is definitely common in every divorce, everybody loses, mm -hmm. you, nobody wins. So you just have to figure out what you're willing to lose. There's no winning. There's no like, oh, you know, and if you, if you feel that way, I'm surprised because it feels like everybody loses, but you also have all these problems that you gaslight yourself or other people gaslight and I wanted to get rid of those problems so bad I wanted to have real life problems and that's what this farm is to me is that's what the therapy is is I have real life problems I have life or death I have triage I have you know feeding a, you know a schedule that, that needs to be kept and for cleanliness for health reasons for you know and 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 what do you say like I have a standard it's a very clean, lovely, well-organized <laughs> place. And that I was able to take this tornado that was in my head and make it real and then have real problems. We had a chicken die. Mm -hmm. It was very sad. <laughs> it's like yeah. it's our first casualty. There was death uh, on, uh, on a farm. Yeah. I mean, I didn't have a full-on farm growing up, but I remember when we'd lose a bunny to a hawk or something. And it's it teaches you so much. It really does kind of make the other their stuff kind of quiet down and yeah. not seem as big of a deal when well, you I was have like okay well the, like this one was finally coming around you know I collected the eggs I was like oh this is the last egg you laid you know it's Aww, just yeah. stupid stuff but like you know you you get out of your head mm -hmm. so that's what it's kind of been for me but you know now going into this summer camp program we're doing a, a month and every Tuesday and Thursday and the kids get bussed in and there's you know two learning stations in the morning and then they have lunch and then two learning stations in the afternoon and then you know each of them get to go through a petting zoo to kind of interact with the animals so you guys are welcome to come I can't wait to check <laughs> it out know. there's lots of babies I think the star of the show though is definitely going to be the micro mini Scotland Highland cow beautiful oh. I've seen, is it him little him. red so everybody's got their spring break plans right well ours is to go down and pick up this cow we're gonna have some fun stops along the way but yeah we pick up little red 
from this amazing lady that, you know, if you ever want to get somebody that you interview far further away, I don't know if you guys do that, but there's so many amazing ladies out there. I love her story. She's a third generation rancher and her, her ranching operation, just like at most things in California, it's so expensive. The, the hay is expensive. The delivery is expensive. You know, ve veterinarian costs are expensive. It's really hard for ranchers to survive in California right now. So she, her, her family ranch was going under, they were going to have to sell it. And she came up with this crazy idea and brought it to her family and said, I want to. I want to raise, I want to breed micro mini Scotland Highland cows so that, you know, hobby farms and schools and everybody can have a cow. This cow only needs a, a quarter acre to graze on, whereas most cow, each cow needs a, an acre. So you have to have a, a larger space, but these ones only require that. And you can also, you know, feed them hay or whatnot. And they're freaking adorable. They, are. they look like little stuffed animals. If you don't know, those are the ones with the long hair that looks like it's always in their eyes. They're just like oh. covered in all this and long you, hair. They, you just brush them. And I think there's a girl out there that literally uses the, the Dyson air curl. <laughs> I mean, I was curling my hair this morning and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, oh, I could do this to my cow. <laughs> Fancy cow. <laughs> oh God, that might happen. Um, <laughs> I could see you doing could, that actually. Yeah, and he's going to be like, I'm a boy. <laughs> so Not today. Right, she's today, fabulous. Nobody knows yet. Um, <laughs> but this woman, like, she's got, a, she's really inspirational because it took off so much that now she does IVF breeding. Oh. So there's, and she does four auctions a year. So I had to, you know, go into an auction to get this cow and it was right before Christmas and we got it. And so then they send you, you know, a framed photo of it to put under the tree. And so like artist was able to unwrap it and I'm like, Aww. we got a cow. Merry Christmas. <laughs> so... I'm very excited for that, that he will be the star of the show, I think, for sure. Oh, yeah. I just love your whole story, Marin, from start to finish. I just think how incredibly brave you are. I don't know if you view yourself that way, but you definitely should. I think it takes a lot of guts to do what you've done to make. I like how you broke it down by one. It was one decision, one right decision after another. And that's kind of what got you through that foggy, confusing time that I think so many women experience when they are contemplating, do I leave? Do I stay? What about the kids? Yeah, you're right. Everyone's going to get hurt to some capacity. You cannot go through it and, and fully protect the kids and fully protect your own heart. Or I mean, there, there are casualties, but at the end of the day, you have to make that one right choice mm -hmm. after another and look where it has gotten you. And I think, look at what your daughter is witnessing. And so look what my mom can do. Look, she's invincible. She is strong. She is brave. I think though, at this point, she just comes home and says, what new animal do we have today? <laughs> <laughs> but you definitely you. are an example of, to her, I'm sure she's witnessing you. Well, she's a lot steps. like me and the way I was with my mother. And, you know, you, sometimes you don't, you don't know how great they are till older and older in life. You know, I, my mother and I run a business together. We talk five times a day. So you, sometimes we, we just, we function at such a high frequency and we go, 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 go. We have a retreat every year. And I know you guys do retreats and they're so important. And I think we're learning at this point, they used to be so scheduled. And at this, and as we get older, we're starting to realize that retreats are supposed to have no schedule in some ways. Like, you know, we do spa retreats and, and we share the curriculum that we learn during the year, but we need to start making it very loose and flowy because everything in your life is so scheduled. So I, I try to do that. I, I just feel like I'm functioning at a very high frequency for this whole year. And I'm going to try and turn it down a little bit and enjoy some of the fruits of my labor. I let's talk about those dating apps a little bit. Oh, oh that's my, fine. Let's I, get into that. I, I, you know, it just let's because this is kind of funny. So yeah, after nine years of being married, oh my God. you're back and in I'm the sure, game. I'm sure, some, yeah, I'm sure you guys have talked about it. It's, but I mean, it's hilarious out there. And as a joke, as a joke, but it was so funny. I joined farmersonly.com. Oh, okay. I was wondering <laughs> if there was something for like farm girls. <laughs> oh my God. It is still, I like, honestly, I still have a, I'll, I still have a God off of it because it's just so funny. There's like farmers in Utah or Alabama or whatever. And they're just like, you know, I've got horses and acreage and whatever. And like, they literally think you're just going to jump in your car and drive there. I mean, wow. Cowgirls yeah, just yeah. might. <laughs> totally. 
but no, it, it's just, it's, it's been pretty funny. And honestly, I don't even know how to unsubscribe. Like, <laughs> I think it's so old school that they might not even have an unsubscribe right. button. When you're in, you're I in. I just started a whole new email address to get away from farmersonly.com. You can uh, well, use it for amusement now. Like, yeah, if I ever go back, I'm like, oh, 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 <laughs> whoa. But just, I think I was given a little gift because I am a little bit of an old school romantic and I don't like apps. And so I was just busy doing my life and. I, you know, signed up to be the soccer mom, the team mom for, you know, my daughter's first soccer team. And, you know, making banners used to be, you know, like, I don't know if you grew up, like it was like a piece of felt and you'd put your name yeah. on it and you marched mm-hmm. in the little parade and you held it. Great. Now, now it needs to be like PVC pipe and vinyl and like graphic. Yeah. Printed lights. from a company. Printed. Yeah. And <laughs> so I was like, okay, so I'm getting through all this. And then I get to Home Depot and it's August. And I had just got, I just adopted two puppies that we saved from a Fresno kill shelter. Girl, you got a lot going on. I don't know how you're doing it. How does this even fit into farm oh. life? So yeah, in Fresno, they kill puppies. They have such a problem with people oh. not neutering and spaying their dogs that in Fresno, they kill puppies. And so these two vets had these adorable brother and sister puppies, Aussie Labs, and was just like, we can't do it. So they got in their car, they drove all the way to Concord, and they left it at uh, East Bay Rescue and Refu- Refuge. And so they put them up on the website. I was like, immediately love these dogs. So now I had agreed to take them after their foster mom. Well, foster mom had to go get back surgery. So surprise, you're taking the puppies now. Oh. It's not ready, but it's like a hundred and something degrees in Livermore. So I can't leave them in the car. So here I am in Home Depot with the soccer banner and the PVC pipe and the PVC pipe oil. And they're so long, you know, and I'm like, how do you cut these things? And then I'm looking at the wall of the connectors and there's so many connectors. I don't know if you've seen PVC pipe, the, the pipe aisle. It's a, it's mm-hmm. overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Everything in Home Depot <laughs> yeah, is <I> overwhelming <laughs> to me. Um, and so, and then Artis is there in her soccer uniform, you know, dancing around. And I'm trying to get, the, <laughs> and I got the puppies trying to keep them in the cart. And this Ow. very handsome man comes around the corner and he looks at me and I, I look at him and he looks at the situation. I got the banner out. I got the pipe. I got the puppies. I got the dancing daughter. And he just said, you look like you could use some help. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, yes, yeah, it's, I, it's a little obvious. Um, <laughs> and so he helped me cut the PVC pipe. He helped me find the connectors. And my daughter comes up to me and she goes, we should, we should say thank you. Oh, and I'm like, yes, yeah, we definitely should say thank you. This is it's really nice of him. She's like, no, we should do something nice for him. I said, okay, well, what should we do? And she said, we should take him to ice cream. <laughs> oh, I was like, oh, okay. It's very old fashioned. It is. <laughs> um, and so I said, well, you can ask him. And so she goes up to him and says, my mom and I would like to take you to ice cream for helping us. And, and I said, but you have a soccer game. So this has to be after. And she said, would you like to go to ice cream with us after soccer? But he said, yeah, I, I like ice cream. Sure. And so I said, well, we're going to be at Lord's after the soccer game. So if you show up, we'll buy you ice cream. And sure enough, he showed up and they both like mint chip ice cream. And mm. we've been dating ever since. Wow. <laughs> Artist, the little matchmaker. Right? Yes. <laughs> wow. So, and every time, you know, it, it was funny in the first couple of months, every time we went to Home Depot, she's like, where's Tim? Oh, um, <laughs> she literally, I think she thought he worked there. <laughs> but yeah, that was a, so yeah, letting your children pick your date I guess not such a bad idea yeah it worked nice. out yeah better than the cowboy app or oh my God. <laughs> rancher yeah. app yeah these apps I mean I know they're kind of a necessary evil but I'm so glad that we were able to escape them mm. yes. mm-hmm. I just feel my first impression of them is just how quickly you can go through it and yeah if you start living that way it's just instant gratification and it doesn't give you a real chance to be human yeah well, there's no depth there it's like i swipe right if you like the way they look and right. and they can say anything they want really lame so yeah but you know what this is so cool because this is recent and so this is gives these women hope who are out there that still think like i can't just mm. find somebody without being on an app home depot, home depot girls <laughs> <laughs> well, the ratio of men to women is pretty good at Home right. Depot, so that's... So, that's and for Christmas, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I had my one cheese. He's very romantic and cheesy, and I'm not. You know, I'm very this tough farm girl. 
but I did buy him a hammer. <laughs> then I got it engraved and says, let's do this. <laughs> Cute. Because it's the Home Depot <laughs> slogan. Yes. <laughs> but I do want to ask you know. a little bit, or not even ask, but just give my input on like what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing from you. I just, I think how miraculous that your, how, the way your life has changed since making that decision. It's like you were, I mean, I knew you when you were married and then heard that you had gotten divorced, hadn't seen you. And I'm seeing a woman that is just beaming with light in front of me now. And hearing you talk about your journey, I really hope this gives women hope that if you are on the fence and you're you're not feeling fulfilled, your boundaries are in question in your relationship. There is hope. There is a beautiful light at the other side of that tunnel. If you're brave enough to go through it and make that yeah. decision, you're a perfect example of that. Just what can see how everything in your life has fallen into place in a way that is really honoring who you are to your core. I mean, I know you've always loved horses. And that's been a part of your life and taking care of children, mm -hmm. clearly. But just the way it has all come full circle and encompassed every bit of your life now. When you are caught in a divorce, you know, whether you want to use the buzz term with a narcissist or whatever, you are constantly giving away your energy, your time, your effort. And when you get that all back, it's very scary and you have to channel it, especially if you're a mother and with, with children and whatnot. And like the first night, you know, you don't have your child or you start going to a, you know, a two, two, three or some these weird schedules. You, you know, you lean on your friends, but you have to find because you've been giving so much. And even if you are putting it under the rug or keeping up with the Jones and keeping a good face and pretending like it's not happening, that takes so much energy to do that. You don't even know it. And you lose yourself along the way because where's the time to check in with you and what you even want? You're just trying to keep all the balls in the air and stay afloat, make everybody happy, be there for your stepkids. I know that was a huge struggle for you. I remember talking to you mm -hmm. and that was like a big deciding factor for when you thought you could stay and stick it out. It's like, I don't want to lose that, that connection. I've, I've spoken with their mom. We've actually become better friends through this. And we had this moment and I did not see this coming at all. And we had, you know, a really good talk and a coffee. And then like about an hour into it, she looks at me and she says, you know, I, like we're saying goodbye. And she just says, I want to thank you. You kept my kids safe. And I, you know, never thought I would hear anything like that. But yeah, you know, they're, they're ones in college. The twins are in high school and, you know, they they always had a very like a strong mother too, you know, so th that I knew that they were going to be okay. And they are, you know, they yeah, and they'll never forget that is. impact that you had on them and the bonus, the wonderful bonus mom that you have been to them. Now that they're going into adulthood, it's like, they're not going to forget that. I think what I want to say as I'm hearing this whole story of yours and just seeing the woman that you are is I'm hearing a few different things. Number one, I think sometimes a women are afraid, though, to also lean on a few things. One, like what really deeply speaks to them because they are in such giving mode all the time. What I have found from friends of mine who have gotten divorced is they really had to soul search and figure out like, who am I? What are my deep desires? What am I interested in? And like, when you get clear on those things, you're able to jump into circumstances and receive in different ways. And I love that, that, you know, you're taking passions of yours and bringing them together and then creating, right? Because we are creators naturally, but like you've really created this farm mm. and all the things that you're doing in it that are tapping into all the parts of you. But also, you know, you mentioned, okay, when I made that decision to talking to friends, right? And it's hard because to the world, we want to show a certain face. We want that mask of like, I got it together. I'm okay, you know, but there are moments you mentioned the first night without your child. Like, I'm sure that wasn't just a, oh, yay, I'm free kind of night, right? It's like my child is not in my, like, it's a releasing of control and sadness. I'm, I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to speak for you. Yeah, honestly, sometimes the first night you just sleep. You just oh. sleep. Okay. Have you, ever, have you ever, like, I feel like we get to this point in our lives where you're like, you got to find a friend that's willing to go away on a trip with you. And the first night you just sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They know yes. that's a part of the deal. <laughs> yeah. Right. We're not going out to the bars. Yeah, we're, we're not going to, yeah. 
But then, yeah, you know, it sets in and you just have to stay busy. Yeah. Well, because there are women, I think, who you're obviously a strong woman and you're obviously somebody who, like you said, you're you're high vibing. Right. And so for you, it's 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 movement and it's doing. I know that there are a lot of women that shut down. And so even that first night of sleep turns into two nights of sleep of three nights of sleep of I, I don't even have it in me to do anything. So I think there's so much wrapped up in all this. But I, I love that your story is a story, though, of perseverance and hope for others. And, and even just the way that you met the guy, you know, at Home Depot. I mean, the fact that you're even open to like, you know, taking on this role as soccer mom, yeah. team, like, you know, team I'm person. Like, oh, no, <laughs> you have I'm to maxed out. That there's somebody <laughs> out there that wants your mess. Because we're yeah. all some sort of hot mess. Yeah. I mean, and oh, I, yeah. like your men, your husbands are lovers of beautiful hot messes. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that in the most like yes. actually wonderful way because you're allowed to be creative. You're yes. allowed to make your messes. And, you know, I think there's a song out there. I think it was Advanced Joy, but your mess is mine. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, and, um, I think Brody played that on the ukulele once and it oh. just got to me. I'm just like, yeah, you know, this and it, all my cards were on the table mm-hmm. when he turned down that corner. I mean, there was no, I was hiding nothing. There's puppies in right. the cart. There was <laughs> mess on the floor. I heard all is. I had the messy hair bun and my, oh my, my daughter's dancing around like a fairy in her soccer. <laughs> So I was like, this is it. I got nothing. I, and we like ice cream. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm not hiding anything. Yeah, so Show up as you are. There Love is that. something about that that I think people appreciate when you get off because the apps hide everything. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes you do have to be fearless to be the hot mess that you are and bring in a little chicken dust. The amazing thing, what you know, I used to tell people, oh, I need to go to a country that doesn't have Valentine's Day or I'm never going to ce- celebrate Valentine's Day again. This Valentine's Day, he took both my daughter and his daughter out to dinner at La Conda in Danville. The Fla- new guy. Flowers, yeah. balloons, mm-hmm. amazing dessert. I mean, it was one of probably one of the most magical Valentine's Days I've ever had. Wow. And I didn't even think about what happened last year. I mean, I could not believe that that was actually happening. And you didn't have to go to another country. No. Right here, <laughs> right here in town. No, maybe next year. Maybe I'll still yeah, be putting totally. that out there. Hmm. <laughs> I actually researched it and Indonesia does not celebrate. Oh, <laughs> okay. So for, for all anyone the ladies, to... yeah, who need to just like escape that. <laughs> now, you know. Yeah. Thanks, Marin. <laughs> um, but I'm just saying it was like a really real, real thing. I thought I was like never going to be able to celebrate this holiday. Another example of how it does get better after it divorce. It does. The first six months are hell. You, it's the longest year of your life. I'm probably about two weeks away from my divorce sell- settlement. We finally are agreeing to sell the house next month. I mean, it, it takes time. It's when people say it's the business of divorce. It, it is a business. Yeah, and just it, to get through that. Start, like looking at it that and like categorizing it. Mm. One thing I can tell, you know, if you are considering it, you definitely want to get yourself an amazing lawyer. Women need to have representation. Yeah. I do know a lot of women who don't do that right off the bat. And then they end up getting screwed yeah. because their ex has representation. Mm. Fighting it's for tough them. though because you have to come up with the money yeah. first. So you need kind of like, and, and this is real talk, you need about 10 grand. Mm-hmm. You need to, if you're you're going to be thinking about getting divorced you need to have 10 grand because yeah. that's really what the retainer is out there for a good lawyer yeah. and you will go through that quickly and you want to get with a private judge instead of going into and that's another five grand because you want to not be in at the mercy of the public system there's things along the way and you definitely you know i i, I was able to sell my house and in, in san francisco to get that money to continue the lawsuit yeah you always did keep something for yourself which i think is important to share yeah maybe it's, for it's, the younger listeners mm-hmm. going into marriage yeah i i really i mean i've always I told artists you're not allowed to get married until you're 30 <laughs> you, you need your own nest egg mm-hmm. i mean you look at it in some ways like yeah you just you need i i hate to say it it makes me sound like cynical but you need to have a, a fallback plan yeah you do you gotta you gotta look out for your future but it's hard sometimes when you get in so young yeah i mean you know you you've known steve forever yeah i had yeah. not i had nothing he had nothing yeah. we both had nothing so that was but that's but that's that another works. way yeah. like, you know the compromise there is a whole different level yeah you know we, i didn't get married till 35 so i had like this whole life ahead of me it was his second marriage so you know it really is 
a there's I, I definitely think there's just not one way around it. But if you are considering going into divorce, you definitely need to find some way, you know, family loan something because it, otherwise it will drag out to two, three years. Mm, yeah. And even, you know, maybe put money away. This might be a controversial thing to say, but if you are in a relationship with someone who is abusive in any way, shape or form or narcissistic and you just you're you feel yourself, your soul slowly, you know, fading away in that relationship, start putting a little money in a savings account here and there. Like start stockpiling if that's what you need to do and you don't have any of your own coming in. Well, and I feel like they, they need permission. So if you need permission, just know that they're probably doing it. Well, I'll tell you, majority of the women that I've walked this journey with, because I have sat beside plenty. One, it was even just going to the banks and literally finding out that there were accounts that she didn't know about. And she didn't even know where to start with any of this because she was given an allowance. So she did not have any kind of nest egg prior to. But so the stuff doesn't just happen overnight. You, you, you know, when you're getting close to like these decision making times, right? Like, you know, when you're not happy in a relationship. And so the women that I have seen successfully come out of these things, they did start whether they didn't have a job, they got one, you know, whether they didn't have their own money, they started saving mm -hmm. money from somewhere. And yeah. here's another controversial point that mm -hmm. not a lot of people talk about. Misery loves company. Mm -hmm. And I've lost friends. Mm -hmm. I've lost friends because I'm happy, mm -hmm. busy, mm -hmm. and I don't have the time just to sit around and bitch and moan anymore. Yeah. And I've lost some friends because that's what, you know, they wanted to do and that's what they are going to keep doing. And I, did, I definitely didn't think that was going to happen. Mm. So that's like a whole new point of kind of, you know, when you're here, it, people just start sliding down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but it opens so the, it opens you up to new people coming in. The, the circle's are, gotten smaller, stronger, yeah. but yeah, it's definitely gotten smaller and, you know, dealing with that. But honestly, I don't really have the time. Yeah. yeah. Right. You're so, busy building a farm, so either, creating a Yeah. Life. Get, get on the ark. Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> Or you're going to be left behind. Totally. Um, but, you know, it's just something that I've noticed, but it's, you know, it's dealing with it. And I've seen that too, even on the outside where there are friends who also might pick and choose, right? And go like, well, he was my friend or she was my friend or, you know, they're conflicted as to where to go from here. And I've seen groups of friends kind of separate based on one person's divorce or those two are out and everybody else stays together. So many different factors that happen. Yeah, I think when you are really focusing on, you know, your goals and what you want out of life, mm -hmm. yeah, the rest does just kind of fall away and leave what's really important and what really matters so it's also tough because I had my daughter late in life so I'm like 10 years older mm -hmm. than a lot of our peer group and the school groups and stuff like that um oh you got a young spirit girl know, you which great. you would not know no. <laughs> but yeah you know sometimes I just you have to remind yourself of these things and then you just move on mm -hmm. yeah. and then you know in my life you know last night I didn't want to go do night checks <laughs> what are night checks just I go around every night just to make sure all the animals are healthy, have water, food, clean. I have a farm staff and I need to you know make sure that they've gone through their checklist and I can't sleep really. I mean, as much as I it's cold and it's rainy and I don't want to go outside, but I do it and it gives me peace of mind. And, you know, everybody bed, beds down and just prays that the, you know, the, the full moon has been driving the roosters crazy. Oh my God. Mm. <laughs> oh my, it's like one thirty, and the moon's coming over and they think it's the sun. So, oh but yeah, I just, you know, it's a good morning when the roosters don't crow till five <laughs> and you know, and the, and the puppies stay in bed a little longer. So this morning was actually pretty good. I, you know, cause I gave my um, ranch hand the day off today cause he worked on Sunday and I did everything, was able to curl my hair, get my <laughs> face on and even, you know, remember to bring the ducks. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Getting, scooping them up and yeah. putting them in a little cage and bringing them here had to have been a lot. Yeah. Well, I'm getting anxious to hold them. So I think we might have to move into that okay. soon. Duck cuddling time. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's going to be, I mean, you don't even need me here. You're going to want me to leave them, I'm sure. So, okay. Well, can I bring them to you? Sure. Yes. Bring them over. Okay. It's cute. They're in like a little puppy crate. <laughs> I don't know if that's specifically yeah. designed for ducks, but it looks like a puppy crate. Oh my God. They're so naked. All their little webbed <laughs> feet. Hi. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. My daughter is going to be so upset. She missed Hi. this. 
They haven't been named yet, so you guys can go ahead and name they them. They haven't? Oh, if you, yeah. Oh, gosh. Like a naming ceremony. Oh, my gosh. Look at him. I know. <laughs> He's so sh too cute. They are adorable. Well, I thank you, Marin, so much for coming and sharing your journey with us. It's so inspiring and beautiful to hear women like you share these kind of stories of transformation. And thank you for bringing these precious little, a little piece of your farm to our That's My Girl studio. Oh I my know. gosh. And now we get to name them. So once oh. we shut down yeah. here, we get to actually pick names for these little Okay. Cute well, this one I'm going to call Oprah because oh. <laughs> like my girl. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Aww. So cute. I'm Thank gonna call you, this Marin. one Zen. Oh, I love it. Right. Oprah and Zen Oprah for my Zen. Oprah and Zen. <laughs> Closing out the show. That's what we got. Tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marin. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. If you liked what you heard and were your girls, please share and add a review on iTunes so we can continue to grow our circle. You can also find us on Instagram and TikTok at That's My Girl Podcast.